everyone has had a fantastic Memorial Day, it's TVB, and as I explained yesterday in my Far Cry New Dawn finale, this is Monster Week. Leading up to the release of Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I'm seeing on Thursday, I will be making a bunch of monster themed videos. And since Mothra is returning to the big screen for the first time since... Pfft, decades, I decided in her honor, let's make an animal facts video. Seven facts about moths. Moths and butterflies are members of the insect order Lepidoptera, or Lepidoptera, please forgive me for mispronouncing that. Uh, the biggest difference between moths and butterflies are the antennae. Butterflies have antennae that are shaped like clubs with a long shaft to support it. Moths' antennae are much more feathery, like the rest of its body. There are also 160,000 species of moths compared to 17,500 species of butterflies, and moths have been around for far longer, as moth fossils have been found to be 190 million years old at the time dinosaurs started to dominate the Earth. So you've probably heard one of your relatives complain about moths eating their clothes. I wouldn't say this is a, um, this, that, that moths eating your favorite sweater is a myth, it's just a simple misunderstanding. Adult moths don't eat cotton, their offspring do. Female moths find a piece of clothing to drop a massive fertilized eggs on so the babies can hatch anywhere between 50 to 1,000 moth larvae and feast on their rather specific diet of silk, wool, cashmere, fur, or just about anything that contains keratin, which is the same material that is found in your fingernails and your hair. Uh, most larvae don't care for cotton fabrics and synthetic clothes that don't use keratin, so don't worry about that spandex you have. That's safe, Batman. If adult moths aren't the ones eating people's clothes, what do they do at lunchtime, you might ask. Some moths eat nectar, rotten fruit, or even feces from other animals. Other moth species don't eat at all. This luna moth, for example, lives for only a week because it doesn't even have a mouth. Its only purpose in adulthood is to reproduce until it dies of either old age or starvation. But if a luna moth lives for a week at the very most because it can't physically eat, is it dying of not eating or it gets too old? Like, can these things die of old age since they only live one week without a mouth? Or is that because of starvation? So it's just starving to death old age for them? No, no, the paradox. Most species don't eat at all. Moths are crucial for, po for pollination, just like bees. The moths that do actually have mouths, these are long tongues that drink some nectar, and their fuzzy little bodies carry to like tons and loads of pollen to other plants. One species of moth and a plant have formed a mutualistic relationship, meaning that both species benefit from their interactions. When a female yucca plant, uh, excuse me, a female yucca moth collects pollen from a yucca plant, she makes a ball out of a, the sticky pollen and shoves it down the stigma of, of any flower she visits. This doesn't, if this doesn't happen to the yucca flower, the, the flower will not uh, develop any seeds. Females also lay their eggs in the flower's chambers, and by the time their larvae hatch, the yucca will have a pod with little seeds. You might have wondered about moths and their bizarre fascination with lights. Plenty of creatures experience a phenomenon called phototaxis. If something like a moth moves towards a light, it means it's positively phototaxic. Other insects like cockroaches, for example, are negatively phototaxic and scurry away to darkness when light is present. There's no clear explanation to why moths are so entranced by lamps or campfires, as moths evolved in a time period when only available light source was the sun, moon, and maybe the occasional forest fire. With that being said, it's possible that moths are attracted to artificial lights because they mistake it for the moon, as they're mostly uh, nocturnal or crepuscular. Crepuscular meaning they're mostly active at dawn and dusk, you know, when the sun is setting and when the sun is rising. Moths are also sensitive to certain wavelengths of light. Moths tend to go nuts over white lights, while they're uninterested in yellow ones. The closest thing we'll ever have to Mothra is the world's biggest moth species, the Atlas Moth. This beauty from the Southeast Asian rainforest has a wingspan of 30 centimeters, which is also one, which is almost one foot. That's bigger than some bird species. The size of these things is so impressive their cocoons are even used for purses in Taiwan. Oh, Asia. And finally, I wouldn't be surprised if, if insects like moths become the food of the future. Moths are already a very common delicacy in most African countries, and size that point to 100 grams these little guys is worth more than 100% of your daily requirement of calcium, iron, potassium, zinc, and other vital minerals. What if my crappy horror movie idea actually happens one day? Thank you, guys. As an alternative to beef, People start eating bugs like moths to lower climate change. In order to be bigger and tastier, we mutate the insects to grow in giant proportions, and then they break loose and start eating people. Hey, a, a real-life moth beast might be possible after all. 
Alright, thank you so much for watching. So yeah, um, I have two more monster themed vid- uh, Yeah, two more monster themed videos that are planned coming out tomorrow and Wednesday. Very excited for this week, guys. It's been pretty busy, and it's getting even busier as the summer goes on. I mean, I'm like, I I've brought some in previous videos. My summer class begins in the middle of June. Till then, I'm just doing my thing, making videos, working, and doing ton- And probably I should go to the gym. Okay, I'm- I'm going on a tangent. Alright. So, yeah. I, happy Memorial Day, guys. Really, if you're a soldier or a veteran watching this right now, thank you for serving our country. Really hope the wars end at some point. And yeah, just remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice so we can be here today, guys. Alright, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe.